Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on setting up Microsoft's Deployment Toolkit 2012 on a Windows Server 2008. We will be deploying Windows 7 in this video and I'll be also be showing you how to integrate MDT with your existing WDS server if you have one and we'll also include a guide to creating a task sequence for the installation of Office 2010. I'll be using VirtualBox in the video to virtualize this on a non-live network because the DHCP role has to be running on a server for WDS and MDT to work correctly. There are many different variations in all workplaces, but in my my environment focuses on a task that I was asked to complete at work recently. Uh, we already had uh, a WDS server running on with Active Directory, uh, and it's also our primary domain controller. As you should be aware, this means that the server is also running DHCP and DNS. MDT uh, was to be installed on a new HP server, uh, with this as its only role as its primary job. Um, so yeah, here we go. Uh, this video has been made, created by me, uh, Jake Billing, and here we go. Here's the setup I'm running. It's a Windows 7 Pro 64-bit uh, operating system. It's got a juicy Intel Core i7 processor. It's the 2700K, and it's overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, as you can imagine, it gives you quite a bit of a boost overclocking your processor, but it does come with a risk of overheating and prolonged. Well, mm -hmm. Reducing its lifespan. Um, this is running alongside the 8 gig of RAM, uh, and it's got more graphical power than you can imagine, really. <laughs> okay, well, we'll start with the first server I'm running on VirtualBox. Now, this is the domain controller, and it's running DHCP, DNS, and the Windows Deployment Services roles. Now, because of this, all I had to do is create a second virtual machine to replicate um, the environment at work. So here I would have the first server running the domain controller, DHCP, Windows Plant Services, DNS, and then the second server would be my MDT server only. So it might sound a bit strange, but I said all environments are different, and some people have different uh, ways of doing things anyway. So here we go. We've got um, I've set the uh, virtual machines on a static address range. Um, I've obviously created a domain, I've got a, a DC Pro mode it, uh, installed all the, all the updates, mm. uh, added the roles, and uh, enabled the remote desktop, and then that was about mm. it. So I launched mm. Windows Deployment Services, and I've created um, my Windows Deployment Share, so that, as you can see there, mm. it's easy to do. Um, then as you can mm. see, my images would be in here if I had some, but for this purpose I haven't. Mm. And then boot images would go into here. So this is the pre-execution environment. Mm. This is the uh, pixie boot environment that you, when you hit F12. And the Windows setups are Windows deployment services, and the Light Touch PE is MDT. Now these ones you create in MDT, and you can copy and paste them and add them as a boot image on your Windows deployment services. This is so that you can pixie boot into your MDT images. Mm. And uh, uh, that's the easiest way I've found personally. But uh, then you can create the task list. So let's go on and show you the second server now, the most important one with MDT on it, and uh, it'll all come together. Okay, so now on to the MDT server. And um, as we can see, I have launched the deployment workbench, and you'll see here you've got deployment shares. So what you do is you go to your Windows Explorer, and you would uh, go to your C drive, and you'd see okay I need to partition this or you can put it on a second drive now you go to uh, disk management and then uh, uh, shrink the volume and create a, a secondary uh, partition in this case I've used one virtual disk it's 100 gig split it into 7030 what I've done is I've made my deployment share 70 gig um, formatted it and called it deployment share so that's as left as it is so what you do is you would click on uh, right click on your deployment share there and click new deployment share you'd Locate where you want it to be stored. So my computer and then deployment share. Click OK. Next, next, go through. OK, done. What that will then do is it will create the file structure that you need to be able to do uh, deployment uh, with MDT. So OK. So. What we need to do now is we need to import our operating system for the first time. So you can see I've already got one installed here and set up and imported. 
But what you need to do is you need to right click on operating system, import your operating system. You can then do it from a disk or from media or from a uh, network location, whatever you prefer. You can do it from a custom image that you've already uploaded with Windows Deployment Services, or you can use Windows Deployment Services, the images that you've already got stored on the server. Mm. So in our case, just for demonstration, full set of files, browse. I've mirrored my desktop to match the desktop on my actual computer, on the actual beast. And uh, there's Office for later, and there is Windows 7. So I click OK, OK, call it whatever you want, click Next and finish. It'll then import it as it has here. Okay, the next thing to do then is to import the drivers for the hardware you'll be putting Windows onto. So what we'd need to do here then, is we need to download all the drivers for the devices inside of the hardware. Um, so if you've got a desktop, a Dell desktop, you go to Dell's website and you download the, the Dell uh, drivers for the components in the machine. So all you need to do is make a folder on your desktop, download the, the device drivers for chipset, for audio, for LAN, for wires, whatever your device is, um, whatever your laptop or desktop supports, um, whatever it needs to run, uh, audio drivers, everything like that, download it all, uh, put it into a folder, uh, unzip everything, put it all in there, and then right click on the out of box drivers, import drivers, really simple, uh, browse, go to your desktop, wherever you stored them, click on the folder, and it will import them all automatically into here. Okay, so it's time to create a task sequence now for those drivers and that operating system to be able to work together. So, you can see I've already got one in there called what, 001. What you need to do then is right click and go task sequence, label it, so 002, task sequence name, Windows 7 install, or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter as long as you know. And then it's a standard client task sequence. You don't want a sysprep machine and shut it down to uh, upload. You don't want to do any post installation um, sequences. You just want to create a standard task sequence. Select the image you've been uploaded or uh, imported, rather. Put the product key in. So in this case, I'm not going to put one, but if you're a business, you put a multiple activation key, a volume key. Um, if it's an older machine like XP, you'd use the key there. Finally, put in the full name, so administrator, the organization, J Billing, JB, whatever, website if you want to put one in. Administrator password is really important for businesses because you don't want any personnel going onto a machine locally without um, a password because they can control it, can't they? Next, uh, finish, import, done. The last thing to do then is to right click and update this deployment share. Okay, so it, it's not um, essential this stage now, but it, in my opinion, it's probably better to automate as much as you can. So if you go to your applications and back to Office, you see this little tab called Office Products. Now, here it allows you to uh, determine how the product installs um, and whether it's silent or whether it's assisted or whether you need to take over and basically do everything. So that's the product to install, Pro Plus. The language one is England, English US, sorry. Product key, stick it in there, it'll activate itself, put the customer name in. Display level, which is obviously basic, um, except the EULA, the EULA, <laughs> and then click OK. Now what that will do is that will install, not silently, but it will install without any interference or uh, without any movement. It will do itself. Um, and then tell you when it's done and say finished. Um, so the last thing to do is just right click, update the deployment share. I know it's a pain, you can do this first if you if you prefer and then now we're going to try and test our image and see if we can pixie boot and install a virtual machine with it so then now we have updated our deployment share we just need to copy those uh, boot pre, pre execution environments they're called uh, like it's called light touch um, it's in the deployment share it goes into boot and you'll see there are 264 and 286 depends on what your operating systems are, their the, the, the architecture is 64 bit or 86 for 32. So, all you need to do is copy the relevant one and paste it onto the desktop of your WDS server and then import it. So, in this case, um, WDS server is a different server. So, I copy it over, right click on the boot image, add boot image, browse to it, and that's it. As soon as I do that, I can then pixie boot into it and see my Windows 7 image. Okay, 
So here we go. Uh, Pixie booted in. I'll show you again. I'll reset this machine. F12 is just a test with a virtual machine. I've got, a, as you can see, a Windows 7 virtual machine running. It automatically detects that there's a Windows deployment service there. And then here we are. Here's our light touch, which we copied and pasted into uh, mm -hmm. the WDS server and imported the boot image. We'll select that. It's a 64 bit version, which I'd like to use. And here we go. Well, now boot us into the pre-execution environment, but we can we'll be able to, able to mm -hmm. see our boot image that we've created, and the task sequence will now run. We'll have to first mm -hmm. authenticate with the domain, so I'll just uh, authenticate mm -hmm. now. So there we go. We want to run the deployment wizard to install a new operating mm -hmm. system, and yeah, usually you wouldn't have to do this, but in my case, it, it does it. So um, it, it's called uh, deployment one slash uh, deployment share, isn't it? Okay, it wants me to authenticate. So, administrator. And then my password. And then Contoso. The classic, the legendary. Now authenticate with the Sarbo. There we go. To the one. Okay, so there we go. That's our task sequences. Now I created one previously, but the one we did in the video was this one here, the Windows 7 install. So we click next, and then you can write in an attend.xml document to, to stop all this and to fill it in for you. Um, in my environment at work, I need to keep this so I can name the machines individually. So JB dash um, VM1, I'll call this one, and then we'll join it to the domain. Um, uh, no, actually, we'll do it later. We'll have it locally. I can change the password if I want. So skip all through this. No key at the moment. Next, yeah, we'll leave that for now. In fact, the language needs to be changed. It should all be changed to your local area, really, but that's okay. That's our task sequence for Office install. So we can click on that. Next. Okay, and I'll have my local administrator password. There we go. I uh, do not want to capture these computer. Let's begin. And there we go. As you can see, the installation has rebooted and it's starting to install Windows 7 Professional 64 bit into my virtual machine. Okay, so as you can see, it's almost finished now. We're, we're pretty close to it rebooting and basically setting itself up for the first time and unpacking all the files. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty quick, this process. It only takes about, well, 10 to 12 minutes uh, on a slow machine. I mean, this is a 512 meg virtual machine on one core, and it's still going pretty quick. Um, I have got my machines running off different hard drives, though. So I've got my first server. Um, the domain controller is running on one of my backup drives, and the MDT server is running off the other backup drive, and then I've got the Windows 7 on the local disk. Um, the reason it's low on disk space is because I've got all my videos on my desktop ready for YouTube, so <laughs> it's, all, it's all piling up. Here we go, so it's rebooted. Here we go again. It boots up. It'll now unpack the files and set up for the first time. Okay, so we're starting the last stage now of the installation. It's all been automated so far. It's just in the last stages of the setup. So it'll check the various hardware on the machine. Obviously, it's virtualized, so it won't be as, as good as a, a desktop or a laptop. But here we go. We should now see that uh, as it uh, logs in to the local administrator account, uh, it should start to install Office by itself without any um, intervening. It should do it all itself. There we go, it gathers information, tries to tattoo. Oh, there we go, it's all applications, it's all Office 2010. Now it should pop up in the background. We're loading the setup.exe that we um, stated earlier that we wanted to use. And there we go. 
ships deployed to, uh, all successfully. No errors, no warnings. And look at that. Nice and clean. Machine ready to use. That would be effectively a deployed computer. Sweet. Okay then, guys, just to mention then, uh, at the end of this video, so you, all you'll need then to try this out are the following files. I mean, you need a copy of Service 2008, you need uh, an operating system to try it out, so I've got both 64 and 32 bit there. Um, mm -hmm. Office 2010, the admin templates for Office can be helpful sometimes, some people need those to be able to automate the installation of Office. Um, the most important two installations are the Deployment Toolkit 2012, 64 bit, and the Automated Installation mm -hmm. Kit from Microsoft. So these two are the most important. We didn't really co cover much, much of the AIK um, simply because we didn't need to customize an N10 file. Um, but yeah, install those two. You'll need uh, your virtual client drive to be able to install your AIK unless you've got it burnt to a disk. But apart from that, yeah, that's everything. And uh, I hope you have fun. And uh, I hope you can give it a go and get back to me if you have any problems. All right, see you later.